Welcome back to Electricity, where we learn more about circuits. So, in the previous video, we already looked at what is current and what is potential difference, the basics. But there's one thing I have not told you about, and that is internal resistance. So, here's a scenario. I have with me a battery, a nice 1.5 volt cell battery. I don't think you can see, it's a little blur. But if you check any battery, you will notice they will write the volts on it. That is what we call the EMF. This is a chemical powerhouse where they will generate electricity or electrical energy. But let's check it. So in a, in a real life experiment, what you would probably want to do before you do any lab is to first check what the EMF is. So, also known as the juicer. So it looks like this. Wow, this, this battery is 9 volts. Okay, so we got 9 volts. Let's now connect it to a circuit. That looks something like this. All right, let's do one more check. Huh? Okay, okay, see voltage, huh? voltage. Huh? Okay, voltage. 9 volts, okay. Now I am going to close the switch. This is an open circuit, so there is no current. See all the electrons? They are just chilling inside the, the wires. They are not, not moving. So that's the moment we close this switch, there is now current flowing the circuit. But oh my goodness, what happened to the battery voltage? Just now it was 9, but the moment we, we close the circuit, it suddenly dropped. It's as if your expectation versus reality is different. Something's funny here. Okay, okay, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on a second. The thing that you need to know is that the battery itself can lose energy because inside the battery, there will be some kind of internal resistance. So actually, yes, it's not got inter real life batteries do have internal resistance. And the question will tell you whether to consider that or not. In this case, our battery here has an internal resistance of 1 ohm inside the battery itself. So that means if this terminal potential difference, see I measure, I use the voltmeter, I measure across the terminal, that's what we call terminal potential difference, it will change depending on whether there is current in the circuit or not. So if your battery only terminal potential difference is 8.18, that means your poor external resistance, whatever that is, will only get 8.18 and not 9 volts. That means what if we open a circuit? No current flowing in the circuit, of course, no potential difference. Because resistors, remember, they dissipate energy. They take the electrical energy and they throw it out as heat. So if there's no current, there's of course no voltage. Once you close it, it goes up to 8.18, which is the same as what the battery provides to the external circuit. Okay, so in... I mean, sometimes there will be no internal resistance. Sometimes there will be a lot. It really depends. See, 10 ohm, lots of resistance. Wow, drop until 4.5 only. Okay, so play around with this simulation. Labs, observe when you're doing labs, setting up actual circuits. So here in our notes, let us redraw roughly a similar circuit. Maybe a bit different, but usually we will draw the EMF, the two lines. Then we'll put a small resistor and package this whole thing inside a kind of like a box to show that, oh, this is the whole battery. Actually, inside the battery, got a mini resistor R inside that. Then we connect this to an external circuit. So you could draw whatever you want. Ah. Light bulb, ah, washing machine, ah, everything. I'm just going to wrap them all inside one and say, okay, external circuit, we just have external resistance. Resistance, which can be external. Just throw it all into one. So this will form a nice little circuit. Okay, I think we should add a switch, right? Okay, let's add a switch. So we can say when the switch is open versus when the switch is closed. So here's our switch. So I think what we want to do now is we will record the observations we had just now in case you need a refresher. So I'm going to draw a table. This is a little bit of a side note, okay? So the switch position, that's the first thing we're going to record. Then we want to record the V1. What is V1? Okay, we are going to measure V1, which is like the terminal potential difference. So connect between here and here. You just take the two things and you poke there, like what we did just now in the simulation. So V1 is going to be here in this column, V1. And we have another one, V2. I might as well talk about current as well. Current, we use a symbol I. So current flowing in the circuit. Usually we measure that with an ammeter. So let's add an ammeter right there. A for ammeter. 
Okay, I think our table is ready. So what happens when the switch is open? V1, what is it going to measure? Ah? It's going to measure just the EMF. It's our EMF here, EMF. So I guess you just measure EMF. So we just write here EMF. So if your EMF is going to be 12 volts, then your remote meter meeting will be EMF. Okay, a reminder that this is measuring terminal potential difference. Terminal PD. Okay, how about V2? What will we see at V2? V2, where is V2? V2 is going to be the voltage across the external resistance. Total external circuit resistance or one resistor. However many you want to put. That's V2. Will you measure anything? There's no current flowing through it. So there's no energy loss. So there's no reading. So you get a zero. Nothing here lah. Nothing. Okay. This is the PD supplied to external Actually, that is terminal PD. Ah, yeah. PD across external circuit. Or sometimes we say that external load. That works too. External R. Okay. So nothing. Is there current flowing through our circuit? Or rather current through battery? Mm, no. So just no. Okay. What if now we close the switch? So we are going to now say, let's close it. Let's get the circuit running. So now current can flow. So current will flow in this manner through the resistor and through the internal resistance as well. Ooh, okay. This is where expectation meets reality. So V1, we are going to measure something less than 12 already. Just going to be something less. Because, because let's say you lose one volt. The potential difference across this internal resistance is 1 volt and it gets very hot, dissipating heat. So you did lose 1 volt. So what will you measure in V1? 12 minus 1. So we can say now hmm, this will be the EMF minus your lost volt. In this case or this example, if you lose 1 volt, then you only have 11 volts left because 12 minus 1 is 11. Okay, mm, how about the external resistor? So once again, what comes out of the battery is supplied to the external load or external circuit. So you'll be the same. E minus V lost. So I'm going to write that here. Same as terminal potential difference. V1. Okay, and is that current flowing through everything? Yes. Current through the battery, current through the emitter. Alright, so this one is a nice summary of what you will observe. And if you find it hard to imagine what's going on, list it out, list it out, step by step. So let's write some definitions also. What is internal resistance? How do we describe it if we are asked to describe it? So, so the first thing we're going to say is that what is internal resistance? This is what we call the resistance of a cell. Cell means battery. Uh, and this resistance of cell causes what we call lost volts. Right? When current flows through the battery, only when there is current, you have lost volts. When current flows through the internal resistance. Or as I told through the cell, lah. Okay, that's how you calculate that is the loss volt equals to the current times internal resistance. V equals IR looks familiar, right? Okay, so there is one equation you can summarize based on all these observations that we have done. And the equation, kind of like an equation, is that, okay, what actually comes out of the battery we call terminal potential difference. Terminal PD, or sometimes I just write V terminal. And this will equal to what EMF you had in the beginning minus whatever you already lost. We lost. This is pretty much the core concept that you need to understand when doing all kinds of calculations related to internal resistance and circuits. 
Okay, but there are other forms, and if you substitute in V I R Ohm's law, remember this V equals I R. Into any of these, we can expand it a little bit more. So let's do that. So one possible form is hmm, terminal potential difference. Oftentimes, is the same as external circuit. See this? So sometimes we can say, oh, this one can just become I current times the total external circuit resistance. I external, or sometimes just IR in this case. So IR equals to EMF minus, now loss volts we can calculate as I through the battery times the internal resistance, IR. And oftentimes you will see the textbook or some parts here rearrange this to become IR plus IR. Yeah, so that's how you can calculate anything with a resistance, current, EMF, as long as there's internal resistance. Now, what if we were to do an experiment with this circuit and we keep changing the resistance? We can actually draw a graph of terminal potential difference. Terminal. What actually comes out of our battery, the reality, against, okay, what shall we do? We can do, uh, you can do resistance or current. I think we'll do current. Current through the battery. So <coughs> you change the current by varying, uh, varying your external resistance, external R in the whole circuit. Oftentimes you use what we call a potentiometer. Like uh, as we draw this symbol, the arrow. Hmm. Or you just add more resistors, ah, up to you, ah, whatever method. Lah, okay? As long as you vary R, you will affect the current through the battery. Okay, so remember, affect R, current through the battery. So how would the graph look like? Hmm. Scratch our head a bit. Ah, there's one point that I know is for sure will be there. The first point is the intercept. When there is no current, zero, no current flowing through the battery, there is no loss volts. So whatever is across the terminal is the EMF. So here, no current, no lost vote. So terminal potential difference is equal to the EMF. That's just what it means. Just a little short form sentence there, but you can write in a, a different method. Okay, how about the rest? Is it going to be a curve? Is it going to be a straight line? Let's look at the ex experiment. Which looks something like this. Okay, so we have a battery. Inside there, we have a small internal resistance, an EMF. They use V0, but we, we stick to our terms, okay? And this here is our voltmeter measuring the terminal potential difference. At this point, it matches the EMF. 12, 12. Why? Ah? Oh, because there's no current. There is no... This, this switch is open. Okay, so at zero current, you would measure the full EMF, which is 12. Okay, there's no loss vote. Nobody lose energy. Okay, now we turn on the switch here. So once you turn on the switch, you will have some current. The light bulb is throwing out some energy as well. And you can change the load resistance or the external circuit resistance to be big or to be small. And you can see how you will actually just slide up and down that point. So what you do is in experiment, oh, you do small resistance. Bigger resistance, bigger resistance, bigger and bigger, take a few points, and then you draw a best fit line to get that. Mm. So, if you change internal resistance, you actually change the shape of this whole graph. The gradient will change depending on internal resistance. What if you change the EMF? The EMF, as we saw just now, is the intercept of this graph. So changing that will also change the shape of the graph. Okay, so this is how an uh, experiment would look like. And there's our straight line. So, how do we know actually it's straight line? Means I'm not convinced. During exam, well, we cannot see simulation. How to know? Huh? Good question. So, this, the hint, if you want to know what's the shape of the line, the hint is, think about this equation. What's on our y-axis? V-terminal. Okay, so we want to express in terms of V-terminal equals to other thing. What's on our x-axis? I current through the battery. So I think what we'll do is we'll rearrange a little bit. So this is V terminal equals to E 
minus lost volts we calculate as current moving through a internal resistance. If you cannot recognize, I, I, I arrange a bit more. Huh? Okay, so terminal potential difference equals to negative Ri plus E. Do you recognize this form? This is our straight line equation. <clears throat> so who's on our y-axis? Terminal potential difference. So this is our y. y equals to mx plus c. Who's on our x-axis? Current. So that means e is our intercept, y-intercept, and the gradient will be negative r. So that's, that's how we know. Okay, so I'm going to write a note here. Gradient of this graph V terminal against I is negative R. Must include that, okay? So the moral of today's video is that large, moral of the story, <laughs> large current through the battery in real life, especially since you have internal resistance, is actually not good. Because if your current is too big, you have, your battery is basically useless. And this actually happened one time in the lab lab exam for paper three, uh, one, stu one, one student was like, they raised their hand and like, miss, my circuit is not working. Okay, never mind. That happens a lot. Then we took in the batteries to test it and the batteries were burning hot. What just happened? So the current, somehow the students short circuit the battery. The current through the battery was so big that the internal resistance was just throwing out so much heat. That's why the battery was hot. Thankfully, it did not explode or melt, but that was very dangerous because very large current through battery will cause lots of energy loss. See this energy dissipated? You see the resistance getting hot? Mm. So be careful. Don't short circuit your battery. It might get hot and it'll be pretty much useless. So that's all for today's video. We'll see you in the next one.